Hey folks, I'm Charlie Behrens, your host of the Cast. We are presented and powered by Everlight Solar right up there on the roof. Uh, this is a podcast where we talk to people for and or from the Midwest. And, uh, you know, without further ado, folks, here's today's episode. Hey folks, welcome uh, to another episode of the Cast, remote episode of the Cast. I'm coming to you from New York City. Had a show here this past weekend at City Winery, and today's guest is connected to that. Neve Shulman was there, my uh, my buddy. He's the host of the MTV show Catfish, which has been on for oh a while. Probably a lot of you remember it. It's still on, still going strong. Uh, Neve was there with his wife Laura, and Laura is from Dearborn, Michigan. So we got a little Midwest connection going there. There we go. And um, yeah, there we go. Colleen Maraca joins me remotely. I guess I'm joining you remotely. You're in the crypts. I'm the king of the castle now, and I'm officially in charge. So yeah. You're sitting in my crypts cast chair. Yeah, I am. And it's nice. Uh, Yeah, it feels good. Feels good. Uh, Gonna crack open this brandy. It's been a long week. So uh, yeah, I, I. I'm excited about that. I'm excited that we got Neve on and uh, the catfish. I was thinking in my head, uh, like, what if there was like a Midwest catfish? But instead of it being like about dating, it's like the way that people lie about their fish. It's like very <laughs> literal. <laughs> how would you do that? You would you would just it, it's almost like how you have those little men and then you pull back. It, like it looks like what am I trying to well, say? Well, So what you can do is you can literally take it from people's dating profiles where they go like the, the fish is here. Yeah. And then it, or it's like your buddy's fishing story. They said this, they said all this information and then you catch your buddy in a lie. It's like yeah. Midwest catfish, yeah. like where they're literally catfishing you about the fish that they caught. Yeah, <laughs> that's good. <laughs> they're literally catfishing you about the catfish. Yeah. I did talk to Neve about doing some noodling. So that could be a, a thing that we try at some point. Wow. You know what noodling is? You get in the, it's like the backwoods <laughs> Yeah, you've seen it. <laughs> Where their their arm is like in the mud, right? Yeah, it's yeah. You stick your arm in a hole, a catfish hole, it bites it, you bring it out. One of those. It's more of a southern thing. Does the um, bite hurt? That's my question. Like I feel well, like Well, you yeah, I mean it doesn't feel good. Um and sometimes you can wear a glove, I think, but I don't really think the OGs do. I'm not too sure. I've only done it once and I wasn't successful, so we'll see. But you know what's funny is Neve's whole thing started. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Catfish is a show on MTV. It's about um, basically, you know, people catfishing each other online where they, you know, pretend to be someone who's interested in them or something. And um, and it, they're lying, you know, and they always have an excuse for not being able to meet up in person. And uh, sometimes it's going after money. Sometimes it's a scam. Sometimes it's looking for just an emotional connection or whatever. Um, anyway, the show catfish, Neve posts it and he just kind of finds people who have been catfished or are being catfish. And it all started from a documentary that he did where he was catfished by a woman in the UP. So, I mean, this, that's kind of, it's tough to do a Midwest catfishing when the whole origin of catfish was in the UP. He was, um, yeah, in New York. And she was really a fib. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. Um, I think that was the fakest I, laugh you've ever done in your life. No, I've done faker laughs. Um, but it was definitely mm, fake. <laughs> you for sure was fake. Yeah. You nah. know, you know, I catfished you on a laugh. Yeah. I didn't put enough effort into it. Oh, it's fine. Colleen, don't call me out on my fake laughs on my own show. Soon everybody's going to know all the different fake laughs. You know, I'm doing it to be polite. That's the annoying. I don't need your I'm, pity laugh. I don't need it. Sometimes I think you do. I, I can. I, I am a okay without your laugh. My favorite one is the, <laughs> the little one that, you do, that that's, Dante that's, and I love to do. Yeah, you guys. I love how you guys just make fun of me when I'm not there. That's nice. Yeah. Anyway, besides that, um, the next shows you guys are doing are this. So you had New York this last weekend. And then, uh, yeah, and then Eau Claire. This coming weekend, the next year is really um, when we're starting to back up the tour. I think Eau Claire's almost sold out or is sold out or I don't know. Um, but yeah. it's, it's close to sold out. But then next year, we're, we're back at it, baby. Let's um, go. 
We're going all over the deal. So yeah, we got that going. Um, you know, aside for that thing, uh, housekeeping things off the top, um, you can buy those show tickets. You know, the thing about Christmas is coming up, okay? And uh, I tell you what, here's an easy gift if you forgot to get a gift or you don't have time to wait for the shipping to come in. By the way, you still do have time. If you go to cripescast.com, click on the merch section, you can get all of our Made in the USA, Mantuak Minute merch. Oh, it's all over there. Uh, check it out. Great, great gifts. Good sell, Charlie. Good sell. But if you've waited past the time of where you could get this stuff shipped to you, you can just buy some tickets to a tour uh, date. You know, that's always good. Yeah. Right. Or they could subscribe to the cameo. Charlie. Patreon. Patreon.com. <laughs> you good. <laughs> Charlie Barron's. Yeah, I'm good. You're in a New York I'm state good. of mind. You're not really here. Um but yeah, I think that's a great idea. My dad is like super excited for his mid. He always, on his Christmas list. He said, "I just want Manitowoc Minute merch." So little does he know, he's I'm not spending a dollar. So I feel like <laughs> first of all, I feel like you get him that every year. That's literally what he sent though. Like like all of us are sending our like our stuff in the chat of like what we want for like a Christmas list and stuff. Every single year for the past probably four years, it's athleisure. Why does the mm. man need so much athleisure? Mantuak Minute merch and then ice fishing gear. That's it every single year. And I'm like, I don't, you already have so much of this, but he loves it. So take it from Paul Maraca. He's a Mantuak Minute uh, brand ambassador. He loves it. That's great. Yeah. That's great. Um, I wonder if he knows you don't pay for it. Does he know you just go in the basement mm -hmm. and just take it out of the boxes? He does now. Does he listen to the Cripes cast? He no, he doesn't. He does. He does? Now he knows. <laughs> no, now I you're actually... going to have to get him some athleisure. No, I got him other stuff that's not on his list and he's fine and he's going to like it. And I also, um, I'll get him something for, I don't know what he wants. He has pretty much everything off the Mantuak Minute site. So I don't know what else he wants, but mm. yeah. Mm. Anyway. Uh, what's on your Christmas list? I mean, I want. I'm gonna get myself a little bandsaw. Um, I'm saying from like us. Like, what do you want for Christmas so I can figure out what to get you? Oh, you, come on! You You're getting a handmade something or other again. That's it. Yeah, give me a handmade something. That's fine. Okay. You know I'm too lazy to think about that. You know, <sighs> I don't need anything. I don't need anything. Don't waste your time. Don't waste your money. All right. Anyway, folks. Well, if you're looking for getting people something, you can go to the cripescast.com. We got show dates. We got merch. We got all the things, all the things you need right there. And also, before we start the podcast, um, I uh, just want to say we have been raising money for Doctors Without Borders. You can find their website in the show notes, doctorswithoutborders.org. Um once again, it's hard to know what to do with a lot of people's feelings about what's going on uh, in the Middle East right now. But that is an easy way to um, show support for um, uh, just the, the tragedies that we have been seeing all over the news. Check it out. Doctorswithoutborders.org. Linked in the show notes. And with that, folks, without further ado, here is my conversation with your favorite host of the show, Catfish. Neve Shulman. So lucky Penny for the podcast. Yeah. Let's see what year it is. It sixty-eight. Big things happened in sixty-eight. There was a year of chaos, right? Didn't Bobby Kennedy go in sixty-eight? Oh wow! Or was it not sixty-eight? Bobby Kennedy. Robert. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, Okay, okay. Oh, the other. <laughs> well, because there's. Yeah, now there is the right. Bobby. Ken but back then, I think they called him Bobby Kennedy. Oh, I never thought. I've never heard of that. Yeah, sixty-eight was a maybe I'm turbulent, wrong. turbulent also, time. It know, was. It time was of love, turbulent time of expression, war. Yeah, the whole shebang. A lot, a lot going on. Um, assassinations. That whole thing. Anyway, it's a nice penny though. Yeah. So we were talking. Um, we were talking earlier about stains on on clothing. Stains, yeah, I just got. I, well, so you don't see any really like, obvious stain on this, do you? Now I see one, two, three, four. <laughs> bing, boom, bing. See the wrinkles save you from the stain recognition. Right. 
Now on this one, how many sins do you see? Well, I don't think I would have identified them on my own, but I do, so I see one here. There's definitely one in the pocket, which is probably the one you had wondered about, right? No, I was no. wondering about, that's oh, the one no. Dante see, called out. And, I see it now, yeah. And, and Dante reprimanded me uh, while you're in the bathroom. He said, Charlie, we just bought that. No, but, but that's, I think that you have to just... Roll with it. Yeah. You gotta roll with it. See, Dante? And then, oh yeah, we have this, and then he's gonna say that you have three kids and I have zero excuses. No, so. stains are, stains are stains. Stains are stains. Yeah. That's very philosophical <laughs> of you. Yeah. I honestly think though, like when it comes to clothing and stains and um, cuts and holes, it's just part of it. And it, it, once we lean into that look, mm -hmm. I feel like as a society, we're leaning into that doesn't fit, it's messed up look, right? They're upselling this stuff at thrift shops for like I know. twice the value. Right. I mean, if I, if I had one clothing-related topic that I really wanted to get into. And this is the place. This is that. it. I think it's insane with all the science and technology that we have mm -hmm. that I can't dry my clothes without them shrinking. Significantly. Oh, oh, tell me about it. I, I don't yeah. understand. We can't figure this out? Actually, you ready for it? You can. And you do it without any technology. Oh, just lay it. You, you throw it on over right. the, the kitchen true. table right. uh, chair. Couch, the back of a chair, right. Yeah. yeah, and hopefully not a cloth one. Right. Because uh, that creates mildew. Right. I just, I just feel like I shouldn't have to air dry my clothes to avoid significant size reduction. You'd think there'd be like... <coughs> now maybe Excuse maybe me. the dryer settings, I could get a little bit more into the dryer settings and use the delicate mm, or permanent press. No, no, you can't. I've gone down the dryer settings. They're all lies. It's fair, yeah. You need an air fryer of dryers is what you need. I feel like the air fryer came in and revolutionized mm -hmm. the... Um, way people who didn't know how to cook cook and do you I've, use one i have one you have one different <laughs> i've used one you've used it i've used or, once. Oh, one, one yeah okay yeah um but i'm i'm working on it but yeah right. no i i like that we're putting this out there uh for the universe to i mean i i yeah it bothers me every day every time i put stuff in the dryer i think should I do this? Well, you know, <clears throat> well, I do a lot of laundry also. Yeah, so. yeah. I mean, and you and you got kids. Yeah, and okay. you're not going to separate your stuff from your kids' stuff. No. Like you, who's got time for that? No. I've never separated my clothing ever in my life. Ever. You mean like lights and darks? Yeah, I don't believe in that. <laughs> I think that's racism. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I thought that. Yeah, we should. Yeah, that should have done away with that years, years ago. ago. Yeah. <laughs> But consequently, I have, um, and no, I don't mix delicates from socks or whatever. I don't even know how to do it. I don't know the rules. I don't know where we begin. I have learned from my wife what not to dry. Okay. Certain things that should not be dried. Like, uh, I don't know those. Like gym stuff, you know? Like You don't dry a, a gym stuff? I, get, I don't think you're supposed to dry like elastic -y nylon stuff. If you really? don't have to, or, and also bras. Oh, I think right. Is that right? You're not supposed to dry those. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Hey, learn something new yeah. every day. No drying the bras. Yeah. Yeah. And then obviously, you know, anything that says do not dry. Um. Anyway. Well, thanks for coming to the show last night. Yeah. That was super cool. That was fun. Yeah. Cool of you guys to to stop on by, pop on by. Very that was a surprise. I didn't you didn't want to message me and let me know that that was gonna well, happen. Well, I well I had messaged you when I was in Wisconsin. Yeah. To see if you were around. Yeah, and then I and you were not. You back. Right. You I did, wasn't. right? You weren't around. Oh, so this is my no, no, my no, no, mess no. up. No, no, no. It is. <laughs> this is my mess up. No, yeah. and then you come into my city, you text me, I come into yours, I don't. I hadn't considered it, but it's true. No, yeah. No, and but my wife had already bought the tickets, so I thought, oh great, we're just gonna, we'll we'll just go. 
And it's actually funny. We had a we so my wife's from Michigan. Yeah. She's very Midwestern. I love that about her. Uh, and I've come to really love Midwesterners almost entirely. Um, almost. Well, I mean, I, I haven't met all of, all of them. But for every Midwestern I have met, I pretty much like. Yeah. And uh, so we go to the show. I've never mm-hmm. been to the city winery. And we got there. I don't know why you pushed, your, you pushed it. Well, that's <sighs> another story. Anyway. It wasn't me. Was the show got pushed fine. We get there at 8 for, for now, an 8.30 show. And there's already a line. Oh. All the way down the stairs, out almost to the, it was. I was like, "Wow, this people are really showing up." Now maybe they didn't know it was pushed, so they were just there already because they thought it was an eight o'clock show. But my instinct, instinctual sort of New York East Coast mentality was like, "Shit, like we're gonna get shitty seats because it's not assigned seating." So I start poking my head around, hoping that I'll see somebody who works there who might recognize me, who then ah. might. And it worked, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> You're like... and, and, and the guy who was sort of managing the line is like, hey, don't worry. Once they open the door, it's just like, I'll pop you in the line right here. So I say to Laura, like, I got it. Don't worry. Get off the line and come wait over here. And then, of course, they put us in the line, but it was very obvious to all the people waiting that we had been sort of inserted. Special so we then, privilege. So then immediately I, we feel like bad because they're all like staring at us having just sort of essentially cut the line. Yeah. Right? And then... We get seated, and I didn't know this, but Laura had purchased sort of a premiere ticket, so we oh, had she a did. priority spot. But there's not assigned, and that we bought two, four tickets, and our other friends couldn't come. Oh. So now we're sitting at a table with two extra seats, and some ladies who came in at the end of the line, mm-hmm. whom we had inevitably cut at some point, walked over and said, "Hey, is anyone sitting here? Do you mind if we sit?" And both of us, of course, our preference being to not have other people sitting at our small table was not to lie, but to sort of say, hey, sorry, uh, we have some friends who might be coming. And they had to go find less desirable seats. Mm-hmm. And we were just laughing at, at, at how in a room full of wonderfully nice and um, courteous Midwesterners, we had managed to be huge assholes. We, we'd like, oh. been, we'd, been, we'd, we'd so classically been the, you know, East Coast, like, Jerks. Yeah, yeah. Cut the line, got the table, didn't want to let anyone sit with them, and we felt a little bad about it. Yeah. But now, now you're, you're, you know, confessing it. <laughs> yeah. And well, that, that's, I, that's why I was happy when you reached out because I could, just so I could set the record straight. To, well, apologize to the Barb and Sherry. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Those ladies, whoever they were. Yeah. We knew that our friends were not coming. I'm sure one of them was a Barb. Very I possible, can almost guarantee yeah. that. Well, I'm um, I'm glad that you were able to set the record straight here, yeah. and I do appreciate that. And uh, more importantly, I appreciate you coming out. That was super nice of you, you know. And I set the record straight by not reaching out to you when I was in your city. So I feel like we both well, have gotten a little some some off our chest. You may not have even known that I live in New York. Well, I guess it didn't immediately click, right? You know. And perhaps I was hyper focused on. You got a show. You're doing a show. A show. Yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, thanks for coming on. I mean, I think it's. Uh, I've been trying to think of like some, you know, ever since you reached out that time, which I really appreciate. I've, I've been kind of thinking like, you know, what could we do, you know? And so I, it's always nice to start with a podcast, you know, and then kind of sometimes ideas come from that. Sure. Or, we pick up on a thing like even now we could i'm thinking we could do a bit about drying clothes you yeah. know yeah something that oh simple. my god or just yeah. just how bad well i don't know are, are all guys kind of clueless when it comes to laundry no I no mean, you know, dante some some people are good are at you it. clueless when it comes to laundry i was right i mean yeah. I've, I've learned in the last few years now with the kids and my wife i mean i don't know in in New York City, and I'm sure other major cities, are you familiar with the elect the electric dryers, the the, the non gas dryers? Sure. Right. So, because yeah. it's code now for a lot of cities is they've eliminated gas. Gas dryers is gone because it's ventless, right? So you can't. It's for a lot of reasons now you can't have a heat duct that's venting out that hot air from yeah. your dryer. Yeah. 
And these new fancy, they're sort of European style drying machines. Friggin' Europeans. They're great for in some ways, but they don't dry as quickly. And also, and then maybe this is just ours, but you gotta know it's like a there's like a cheat code to get the thing to start. Have you ever tried one of these? Oh, it's like gotta, a video it has game. to be off, and then you have to open it, yeah. and you have to fill it, you have to close it, then you have to turn it, and and if you don't do that combination of things correctly, somehow you go to press the start button, it just beeps at you, and nothing happens. Yeah, have yeah. you found that? I have no. It's it's like a video game that's not just fun. Just start trying. I hit the start, start, boom. I don't know. It shouldn't be that hard. I've got a dishwasher that acts of, of a certain way. Of very, a certain very dis disposition. Yeah, they're they're so specific and delicate with their order of operations. They're privileged, is what they are. I don't know. It's this new uh, generation of um, drying Appliances. and washing units yeah. in the household that that they just they didn't they don't know what it's like to come up with nothing. Well, that right, and and they want you to to learn learn how them. to do it properly. Like, right. I bought you. You're supposed to be working for me. Yeah. But um, it's just one of those grievances. No one cares what we have to say about it. You know, Maybe not. it's just one of them things that's going to be, and we just have to live with it. We again have to be the ones to meet halfway, right? Or, or, or I guess we could um, get rid of them. We could, and just do it the old-fashioned way. I like a hand wash. Yeah, I'm a hand in the sink. I, I, I do dishes in the sink. I, I mean, soothing. I, <clears throat> yeah, there's also something. To do, oh yeah, oh my god! Especially at a family party, right? It keeps you busy. Some, you know, you're, Dude. I'm, I'm doing the dishes. Yeah, and it's like 10, 10 to fifteen minutes of peaceful, unbothered, task oriented time. You can zone out. Mm -hmm. You can see it's 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 satisfying in that you have mess, and then it's no mess. You know, it's like accomplishing something. Thanksgiving of last year this really came to light for me because i was watching my brother bill and um his kids were kind of running all over you know and you could tell he had kind of had it mm -hmm. and i could tell he had it because it was during cocktail hour he's in the <laughs> kitchen doing the dishes yeah and he's just and i knew that he definitely was avoiding the party because you know what he started cleaning on thanksgiving the coffee pot Oof. he pulled the coffee pot he said it needed it. That's something people clean twice a year. Right. Bill chooses on Thanksgiving to clean the coffee. Well, pot. to be fair, I imagine th sort of post Thanksgiving dinner is a good time for coffee. Certainly is. Right. Yeah. As is, um, this is, by the way, my parents' coffee pot. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, wow, not even his house. Not even his oh, house. Okay. No, he was just looking for things to do sure. where he didn't have yeah. to make any sort I of. I like vacuuming a lot. Oh yeah, big vacuumer. Right, because then there's no chance for conversation. During yeah, that. one you get to move around. You can just you can just change rooms whenever there's an issue. There, yeah, very true. Yeah, yeah. Um, there is a fine art to that. Do you ever get down the rabbit hole of watching people like shop back very messy rooms and just like line by line? Oh, know? I haven't gone that deep, yeah. but I do like watching that lady who cleans bathrooms and kitchens with a nice voice yeah i don't know yeah, i think so but yeah. finding the disgusting right. stuff i also it. like the guy who mows lawns a lot yeah the aerial views of that same deal oh i don't know if i've seen the aerial views as much as just the guy who does it for free he like finds I know, yards that, that are too. overgrown and he's just like can i clean your yard yeah and then he like starts scraping and, the sky yeah. the, the and then the, he just the shows sidewalks. fast motion it's sort of asmr -y in that you can hear the yeah. yeah yeah it's really it's really um i don't know why that's so appealing to the brain but it is yeah it's i mean again i think it comes back to just the satisfaction of some physical task accomplished yeah which at least appeals to me a lot you know? to create dopamine Right. Yeah. Some people do it, you know, in emotional ways. Some people do it, you know, with writing or painting. Yeah. I like cleaning. Yeah. yeah. That's, uh, that's great quality to have. Yeah. Yeah. You're a vacuum guy. I'm a, I really am. Yeah. What kind of vacuum you got? Dyson. Nice. Cordless. Yeah. Cordless. Nothing, yeah. For sure. Yeah. You ever um, switch it up and, and um, go like super old school? You ever get into the older models? Kind of like how a writer might get a typewriter, uh -huh. you know? I mean, I grew up with older vacuums. No, I know. 
I'm just saying. Yeah. Have you, have no, you, I, I wouldn't. How would one do that? You mean like actually go buy an old vacuum? Yeah, go to a vintage vacuum store. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm just I'm curious sure if you've considered it. I, I hadn't. Okay. Um, it's a simple question, really. If no is the well, answer, that's, that's it. Then I guess. Yeah. Um, might be something to consider. Christmas is coming up. Maybe I'll get you something. My car has a vacuum built into it. Get the fuck out of here. What? Yeah. What kind of car do you it's have? It's a Chrysler Pacifica. It's a minivan. It's our family car. Oh, and, uh, a little. No, no, no. Not a little Zoom buddy? No, a full pull out, pull out tube to reach pretty much anywhere in the car. And then in the trunk is like the actual filter canister. And like once every month, I like just, Come just pulls out, you dump it. On. It's amazing. Is this a new one? It's a newer a, car. Oh, yeah. I, I love minivans. Love. I mean, a minivan is a more practical vehicle than a pickup truck, in my opinion. I even, agree. Even if you're doing uh, from a working standpoint, you know? I, I, since we got this car for my first minivan, I'll never go back. My first car was a minivan. Really? Dodge Green Caravan <sighs> SXT. Shot it with a shotgun. That's why I got it. It was my dad's. He made me purchase it. But it, it's honestly the reason my career is the way it is because I went and worked as a PA and I became the set PA because I would move cameras and stuff. Yeah. It's the reason I'm well, sitting here now, talking And to now you. the new ones, the, all the seats, second and third row seats, go fully flat into the floor. Oh, that's what I'm that, so talking about. It turns into a cargo about. van when you need it to. The Stow and Go. Stow and go. And Dodge Grand Caravan SXT did that before anyone else. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, Chrysler Dodge. Same, same church, different right. people. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, how did you think to um, begin? But what, catfish, obviously, was the thing that took you off yeah. on the deal. How, how long was that brewing before you were shooting? Oh, uh, the documentary. The doc. Fish. Well, yeah, the it doc. didn't brew. Well, okay. Uh, the process of that documentary happening was very organic. I was sharing an office with my brother and our friend Henry, who are filmmakers. Mm -hmm. And at the time, I was in the filmmaking space doing documentary sort of videography, weddings, bar mitzvahs, stuff like that. And... I started uh, under no expectation of a documentary, a friendship with this family in Michigan, in the UP. And it was just funny and weird and interesting. And I would mention it to my brother because we were sharing an office. And I think after the third or fourth time, I sort of mentioned what was happening. And as it got more interesting and a little bit weirder, he just instinctively thought, I'm going to capture some of this. This is interesting and, and Neve tends to kind of have things happen that are camera worthy. So as I would turn around and read an email or open a box that they would send me, he would just put his little, you know, mini cam on, film it, and then download that to a hard drive and store it away. And we never had a plan for it. It was just his sort of funny little collection of clips of Neve and his friends in Michigan. And then it wasn't until after eight months of that relationship that things got weird and my brother thought we whoa I, what's this is so this is stranger than i thought and could go somewhere we should really turn our cameras on and like actually make a an effort to film whatever happens next and in doing so we decided it was then time to fly to the up meet these people in person and record that experience and it turned out to be so unusual and unexpected that they then realized, oh my God, we can tell this whole story with all these clips that we have from the past eight months. And now this footage from this weekend that we spent there. And before we kind of dive a little deeper, for those who haven't seen Catfish, what would be your sort of elevator uh, deal? To it? Uh, I would just say it's, it's the very unexpected result of an internet relationship between myself and um, a family in Michigan that 
starts off incredibly innocent and charming and, and turns into a very complicated um, and emotional sort of, well, there's a, comp there's a twist that takes us to a very complicated and emotional place where we discover that the people I had thought I was talking to were vastly different than, than they actually were. Mm -hmm. And um, in putting this together and, you know, you see you like going up that, that on that first night or yeah. whatever, and then kind of it, it, it gets deeper and I won't ruin it for people who, who want to check it out. But like, was there a certain point where you guys n knew like, oh, we for sure have something like, did you have your turning moment? Did we kind of witness that? Yeah, I think you see it in the doc when when we start. I mean, basically what happened was they told me all these things over the months. I had never thought to question it, just sort of taking them at face value. And then one thing became clear that it was fake or a lie. So then we just started looking into other things. And the more we did that, the more we realized, wait, that's not, that's not, a, they lied about this and this. What else, like if, if they lied about all these things, are they lying about everything? Um, and so that was the moment where we thought, okay, we should, we should go there. Mm -hmm. And I think that was kind of the, the turning point where yeah. we decided we were just going to show up. And did you expect, I guess, sort of the reaction that it got and how it spurred into a television show? I mean, could you see that coming? Or no, I mean, this... I, didn't, I didn't even really, because I was so kind of burnt out from having just had the experience and having just had the sort of letdown of it ending awkwardly and, and not how I'd hoped that I didn't really want to have anything to do with the doc. So for, for me, this sort of experience ended when we got home from Michigan. And for my brother and his friend Henry, the, like, the excitement had just begun because mm -hmm. they just realized, oh my God, we've got this you know, project now that we can start editing. And I didn't really want to have anything to do with it. And they kept asking me all these questions. And I had to keep giving them like, e they had to keep going into my email to pull out more things. Like, it was annoying for me because mm -hmm. I was sad and kind of over it. Mm -hmm. um, and then they were editing it, and then they submitted it to the f festivals, and it got into Sundance. And I had never been to Sundance. I didn't really know it was a big deal. Um, but apparently, you know, it obviously yeah. is. Um, and so when it went to Sundance, I thought, okay, cool, fun. Like, let, be, it'll be a little it, Sundance indie film, and that'll be the end of it. But then it was a hit at Sundance, and then it came out in theaters. And like the whole time, every every step of the way, I couldn't believe this sort of embarrassing, weird thing that had happened to me was kept getting bigger and bigger and turning into more and more. And then it was like, a, we pitched a show. And at that point, I thought, okay, cool, this, now I have a job, this could be a job for me. Mm -hmm. That, I, that part, that was when I sort of was into it. Yeah. <laughs> when you're like, now I can <laughs> yeah, I was like, officially monetize I don't know it. what else I'm going to do with my life, but <laughs> maybe I'll make a TV show. And, and, and then here I am now, 12 years later, still making the show. Yeah. Which is crazy. And I still can't believe that. I mean, every time they order more, I just <laughs> I can't believe it. <laughs> well, what do, you, what do you think it is that... Um... They're obviously not ordering more because demand isn't there. So, like, yeah. what do you think it is about the show that, like, speaks to people as technology has progressed, yet this kind of aspect has sort of stayed the same, right. you know? I mean, I think it's got, it's, it's, it must be me. Yeah, it's clearly you. Yeah. I mean, and I wouldn't even dare <laughs> ask it in a leading way. But right. aside for you. Right. Okay. And that's a, it's a small aside. Right. What else the is there game. about the show? Um, yeah. I think, you know, I don't want to get too sappy. We'll get there. But, you know, get there. The show is about human desire. Mm -hmm. And not, not in the carnal or sexual way, because that's really not what it's about, but in the emotional, uh, communal, and um, just sort of... I don't have the right word for it, but the show is about people's need to connect mm. and to, to feel seen and recognized and like they matter. Mm -hmm. And before you can get there, you have a lot of emotions that you have to sort through. Insecurities, unhappiness, sexual curiosity. There's, there's, you know, we're all struggling to figure out 
where where we are and who we are and who we want to be with and what we like and don't like and how we feel or don't feel. And I think the show really kind of gave us people a platform to admit that, hey, you know, I've been avoiding these things or I'm uncertain about these things, but I've ignored all that because I've found someone on the internet that makes me feel good because they say hello and good morning and they ask me how I'm doing and they tell me that I'm cute. Mm -hmm. And for those reasons, I am going to ignore all the red flags and pretend this person exists and is exactly who I hope they are because I don't know how to, nor do I really even want to deal with all of the complicated feelings outside of this simple, nice, clean place that I've found with this person. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's a, it's a show about <laughs> you know, like ignoring your problems yeah. and looking for love and hoping that somehow you're going to win the lottery and, and find that prince or princess charming. And does it ever get easier for you being in some of the most awkward situations, you know? It definitely, yeah, it definitely is easier, I think, now than it had been at times. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't know if this is, I, don't, I haven't really analyzed this thought until right now, but I do think that people are also becoming a little bit less explosive mm. in, in, in maybe gener just in, in general. I think, um, I don't know if it's that we're less or more, more desensitized to strange stuff happening or, or we've seen it happen now so many times before that people are, are maybe wiser not to like let themselves be so raw mm -hmm. with, with how they express themselves. I don't know. I do think that um, I've become less and less concerned with my part in the experience, right? So like I, I try to remove myself more and more from the scenario yeah. and let the people figure it out. But also, I don't know, maybe I'm being too uh, neutralizing. I, I think, again, sort of to speak to what we were talking about earlier, I, I don't know if the things I've learned and the skills and the techniques in making the show have, have made me better or worse. Because now, like, I'm so good at keeping people calm and having a civil conversation uh, sort of take place that maybe we've lost a little bit of the... You're saying for the, the show? The, the, the zazz and the, and the... Yeah. So, yeah, you're saying from the show standpoint, right. missing right. an edge. Yeah, because you're always balancing that. I'm, How do you make it... Right. Well, I don't want people screaming and I don't want, you know, tempers flaring, even though I know that that's what makes... People tend to want to watch the show, but I also am proud that the show is not an over-the-top kind of wild reality show. If there's plenty of that everywhere else, like, right. I want to encourage people to have these conversations in, in meaningful ways. But even as I talk about it now, I'm bored. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> Do you mean you're bored? No, I mean, I want, it's more fun to have, like, you know, sometimes to yell and get upset and, and yeah. you know... Say bad words. Yeah. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. It's kind of like, you can't, and that's sort of, that's interesting because I feel like the things that take off the most, whether you're a creator, you're doing a TV show or whatever, you almost have to be careful for what you ask for because then the demand is more of that. Right. And then that's the echo chamber that amplifies. And then, but... You've also shown that the other way works too. And, and I like that our show, ha the, while it has progressively, I think, become more and more civil, mm -hmm. not that it was ever, you know, so out of control, but the morals of the show ha are, have been strong and I think are stronger than ever. And people keep watching. Mm -hmm. And I think it's because we offer a much needed respect. Res respite? Respite? Sure. Res respite. That sounds right, and yet I've never looked that word yeah. up. Yeah. I think that's what that means. Yeah. We, we offer an alternative to the noisy, loud, screaming, raucous yeah. content that's out there. And I think people want it. They, 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 they want to see a conversation take place about something difficult and complicated and a little upsetting that isn't 
volatile so that they know it's possible for them to have a conversation that they're afraid to have with someone else and 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 have an example of okay i can i can say those things to that person if i do it calmly and hopefully they'll respond calmly as well mm -hmm. yeah so I, hope, I hope we're setting a good example and putting out some encouraging content for people to use in their own lives well and i think like today that is such an incredible and needed example in a lot of ways because you know i think maybe in that person to person interaction you see one thing and it's it's you've found a way to make it largely a cordial deal um but i feel like people typically on social media you know that it's a lot of yelling at each other and lack of empathy on sides of right. things and that kind of gravitates to sort of a polarizing thing so i think you know the heart of it is something a lot of folks yeah seeing, from. seeing people who have done things that are objectively bad as more than just that thing mm -hmm. yeah is it the right yeah yeah um very interesting so <laughs> i didn't expect to get that deep yeah, on it know, but you know, know we really went there we um yeah we're we're in that that deep end we're treading water here Folks, excuse the interruption, but I want to give a big shout out to Everlight Solar. They are the solar panel company for your home, and they are the solar panel company for mine. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. I have Everlight Solar Panels right on the roof of my duplex, and in the attic of my duplex is the Cripes Cast Studio. So uh, it's We are literally beautiful... powered by Everlight Solar. Yeah, and there, there's nothing better than feeling... Uh, like you're doing some good for the environment, but also some good for your bank account. You're getting free energy from the source, from the sun. Check them out, everlightsolar.com. They will come out, give you a consultation, let you know if your house is, uh, if it makes sense to equip your house with Everlight solar panels. Check them out. I'm a huge fan of them, and I think you will be too. Folks, did you hear? You can get instant savings right now when you shop at Fleet Farm. That's right. You can use their seasonal savings coupon, and you'll get $10 off right away when you spend $75 or more. Shop for gifts for people on your list, or ignore the list entirely and pick up a gift for yourself. No one will know, and either way, you'll feel great with the instant savings you'll get. Shop today in store or head online to fleetfarm.com and use the code code Holly23 to get your instant savings. Check them out, Fleet Farm folks. And finally, it's your last chance to get merch off Mantwalk Minute. Your, your Midwest merch. Go to cripescast.com, click on the merch section. You can get your Watch Out for Reindeer shirts, your Christmas gifts like an Ope cribbage board made in the USA. We've got the Ope bottle opener and so, so much more. Koozies, t-shirts, everything. Check it out, mantwalkminute.com. Great if way you to support use, the Cripescast. It's right now if you um, have a purchase of $60 or more and you add the cards or add the playing cards to your cart, you get a free deck of Keep Removing playing cards. And you have to use the code FREEBIE at checkout to get a free, de free deck of cards with a purchase of $60 or more. Hell yeah. Thank you, Colleen. Appreciate yep. you remembering to say that. And uh, all right, folks, here's my conversation. Let's get back to it with Neve. Do you have a plan on like how how far you want to take it? Or are you kind of day at a time? Are you? Um... I mean, we go season to season. So we just finished an episode. We just finished an order of a hundred episodes that MTV had ordered in the end of 2019, uh, and they just ordered 50 more. So we'll, we got to just keep going, just keep chipping away, and when we get to the end of this 50. Yeah, maybe they'll order more. I mean, I have three kids. I live in New York City. It's not cheap. So <laughs> you do the math. I'll keep making the show as long as yeah. they'll have me. I mean, yeah. it's, I, what I've realized now is that I'm about. I'm turning forty in September. I will have. I, this show will have spanned three decades for me. I mean, I started in my twenties, mm -hmm. and that's incredible. I mean, it's crazy. I mean, yes. I don't. I don't know. I mean, Rob Deerdick's got to be older than me, but like other than him, I don't I, I don't know how many people on MTV are in their 40s. Yeah. Um, 
I actually recently got a pair of glasses just for nighttime. Oh, readers. Not even, no, no, not readers. My eyesight, my, I'm, I'm nearsighted. I, I can never figure that out. So I can see near. Okay. I got LASIK 10 years ago, and it's just starting to get like a little fuzzy at night. Oh. So I went from, you know, better than perfect vision, 2010 or something, to now like 2020, which feels soft when you've had such good vision for so long. And so I, I you know, so I, like, when I look up at the night sky, Oh, you want the see stars that? are not ah, crisp, not HD. They're a little fuzzy. That's unfortunate. Yeah. So I got some glasses and I was kind of into it. It was fun. And my kids thought it was so wild that I got glasses. I'm like, ah, oh, daddy got glasses. And I told my wife, I said, hey, what do you think? I was going to like maybe wear these on the show. And, <laughs> and she said, no, no, no. Like, don't don't give people watching any reason to see you as like older. Wait, I'm wearing glasses right now. Well, yeah, now. but this, but you are, you wear glasses, right? It's not like I haven't been wearing glasses. I see. So if I all of a sudden start wearing them, um, is it going to age me up? Is it going to make me seem less relatable? Interesting. Now, I can't imagine anyone, you know, in their teens or 20s looking at me and thinking I'm relatable as is. You know, I feel very old, but um, I don't, well, to them, I seem like, I think they see me as like a like dad, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Um, which is also weird because. Yeah, because you're. It's one thing to four be years a dad, older than me or something right. like that. But it's also another like to have people. That's that's yeah. It's, it's one thing to be a dad. It's another thing for teenagers <laughs> to see you as. And a not dad. even teenagers. Like I'll, you know, we live in in Brooklyn in a pretty young neighborhood, and like we go out at night, and people at bars uh, of age, adults, you know, young adults, like they're so excited when when I come in, but it's not because like they think. I'm cool or like, or that the girls are going to try and flirt with me. Yeah. They're just like, oh, like you're that person I grew up watching on television, you know, and you're like married <laughs> and you have kids and, and I'm like, yeah, but I'm also out and fun. And yeah. They're like, no, 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 no. <laughs> We're not trying to hang out yeah. with you. We just want to take a picture <laughs> and like say hi. Um, yeah. But, but um, um, you know, it's it's you, you go yeah. into it gracefully. No, I, yeah. I, for the record, think you can wear the glasses because you still got an earring. Well, the earring I put back in recently after taking it out in college. Yeah. How did uh, how did it that just went feel? right back in? The hole never closed. Never. Apparently, a, a properly healed piercing never really closes unless mm. you know, I don't know, some strange circumstance. Um, so yeah, I, I put it, I have a second one too. And now I'm like, should I, 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 I had it one in there, but it fell out. So just sticking with the one well, Harrison Ford. Uh, yeah, exactly. He had a little dangle on his. Didn't no, he? I think he did not. I, I've only ever seen him with the hoop. Okay. Maybe it's just a hoop. It might be a bigger hoop. Maybe I thought dangle. at one point I saw a little dangle on his ear, but I could have just dreamt it. Is it, is it very noticeable? Yeah, I guess it is. That's cool. Thanks. Yeah. I just got a new little mini tattoo. What'd you get? Oh, I just got a, a, a number four on my uh, ankle. Oh yeah, when, it was. Uh, when, yeah, I went on a, uh, uh, I guess you call it an ultra run, with yeah. with a team of six people. Um, you killed two of them, so you got the number four. That's it. Sick. Who told you that? I just guessed. Hmm. No, I I. I was making a funny. Yeah. Um, so why did you get? Four? No, well, so we were we were we we ran for a long time rotating, mm -hmm. and so each of us had a number in the group, and my number happened before, which happens to be my lucky number. So I was like, great, perfect. And then at the end, we all wanted to get some sort of communal experiential tattoo to commemorate our achievement. Yeah. And uh, we, you know, we cycled through some other ideas, and eventually we landed on, well, what if we each just got our number in the rotation? And so we did. It's cool. Yeah, it's kind of cool. Um, how many other tattoos do you have? Just one. Okay. Which is a which is a catfish. Yeah. Like a uh, friend tattoo. We, like me and a few other friends from who made the dog. Oh, that's cool. And oh. now having two tattoos now, that's much different than one tattoo. Are you getting the bug to get more tattoos? Um, I like the idea of small uh, tattoos for to sort of commemorate meaningful things. Mm -hmm. I don't really, I don't know, I don't have the urge to like cover myself in, in art. Mm -hmm. But if I do something 
or like I was thinking about doing something for like my kids, you know, although they're still alive. Yeah. It's like weird to kind of get a yeah. tattoo like for your kids. Yeah. And then, and then uh, each kid's going to need a tattoo. Right? I kind of, yeah. I was thinking that. So you got some more tattoos coming for you. Oh, you mean a tattoo for each? T- for each kid. For each kid. Yeah. I sure. think that's only fair. Right. Yeah. I could also make sort of one thing that encompasses all of them. Right? You could, but I think it'd be more fun if you did um, three right. of them. I'm into that. What about um, you? You got any tattoos? I do not have tattoos. Would you believe it? Would you th- now? Would now, you think that I would have a are tattoo? Tattoos a, 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 would you say tattoos are a big Midwestern thing? I would say folks in the Midwest. Dante's from Sheboygan. He's got how many tattoos? You got Dante? Five. Five tattoos. Sid, is, she's got five. She's from St. Louis huh. area, Missouri. It still counts. And I was um, actually so yeah. You know, I liked your joke last night about. Was it was it Kansas? No. What the the basement of Indiana? The Indiana. Yeah. Um, because I was shocked when I recently I recently looked up what states are Midwest. Yeah. And I was surprised by which state. Yeah. Oh, by well, I would say by mostly the southern Missouri. You didn't think borders. borders. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You just don't think about it that way. It's interesting because you know I. I I, had, I wrote the Midwest Survival Guide, the book, and in doing it, I also was, I didn't know it was specific. I didn't know they actually mapped it out in the U.S. I was just going to come up with some states right. that I thought should be Would included. you have included Missouri? <coughs> of course. Uh, <laughs> no. I mean, no, I mean, Missouri's one that goes southern, goes in right, between. Right. And, you know, you do have the plain states, but Missouri definitely counts. You know, it's definitely Midwest. And Are the Dakotas? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, so yeah. But how the, far west does it go? That's it. The Dakotas, right, okay. uh, Iowa, you know, Nebraska. And are those all central time zone? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. So it's, it is also specific to... It's the, all central. <laughs> No. Oh. Because Ohio is, is Eastern. Eastern. Yeah. Michigan is Eastern too. Yeah. Oh, that is true. Right. That's right. I Parts heard... of Indiana. Okay. So it's East, Eastern and Central. Right. Yeah. So it's kind of it's a wild thing there. But yeah. Um, would, would you ever do live shows uh, like stand up, uh, uh, that, wow. that whole deal? I'm not. I mean, not a comedian. I'm not a no, I mean, I just wanted to know if you kind of, in the same way well, you wanted I've, three more tattoos. Right. Is, I've done, I've done a lot of speaking engagements where I like, I have a, like a, like a talk. Nice. That I put together with some videos and some, you know, some crowd work. Yeah, that's fine. I like being on stage for sure. Yeah. Uh, I, I did a lot of colleges and I do, have you done that circuit? Uh, I've done some colleges. Yeah. Not through have the you, you were his manager, right? Yeah. You should, yeah. have you taken him to the. I can't remember what it's called, but like every year they have this big college conference where all the student organizers from the schools come and like find new acts to book for like their upcoming year. So Dante's my producer, my manager. Oh, right. okay. Sorry, my producer. manager hasn't done that because um, that not, what is it, NAFTA or NAFTA. Something? NAFTA. Yeah. No, NAFTA would be the North American oh, right. Free no, Trade. Yeah. But you're right. That it's something like that. Something. Yeah, with, but yeah. I haven't. And the reason I haven't is I just started booking them independently, and it was oh, fine. Okay. Like booking a school year there, you know. Great. So anyway, but it's it's fun. Um, I wanted to give. So, oh, go oh, ahead. I was gonna say I wanted to. I thought it'd be fun to to recount my first Christmas in Michigan. Oh yeah, because we got to talk about your wife, who is so right. much fun. <laughs> oh my god! And we thought that. <laughs> She's from Dearborn, right. so I that threw is, out the yeah. wa- last night in the green room. Okay. We're chit-chatting, yeah. giving the audience the recap. Your wife's talking about Dearborn, and of course I throw out the one fella I know from Dearborn, my brother-in-law, said his last name. She's like, I know his sister. And I was like, yeah, he's got his sister, that name. And we were thinking two different families. Right. Yeah. But 
You also happen to, your sister happens to be married to the son of the former mayor or, or something. Guido? That was confusing. Is me. that true? Well, um, cause that's why I think Laura was like, oh, that's why I recognize that name. And, but, and it could be a different Gabe Guido is my brother-in-law. And was I, his dad, I, his dad, a, a high ranking government official at, at the state level. <laughs> I can't tell you I, I don't believe that's okay. the case. Okay, maybe yeah. not. Um, I could be wrong, though. But it was funny to see her, my wife, cycle through the thrill of, of how coincidental and, and satisfying it was for you to throw out one person in Dearborn and her to be like, oh my God, I went to high school with his sister. And then for the rest of the night to see her spiraling. Mm-hmm. Reaching out to other friends in, in Dearborn, to, realizing that she might be wrong, and mm -hmm. is is that who she thinks it is? And then finding out that it's not. I mean, just from <laughs> from high to low in the course of about four hours, <laughs> she <laughs> she couldn't sleep. She was up. <laughs> late. I mean, she's like, I got to figure yeah. this out. Um, meanwhile, I was going to call my sister at some point today to ah, ask her about okay. it, but I never got there. Luckily, call her. you know, your wife did all the. Will she story. answer if you call? Sure, she'll answer. Let's see, yeah, a lot of pressure. See. This is, look at the investigative journalist in you. This is, yeah, well, this is where things get interesting. Mm -hmm. Making real phone calls live. Mm -hmm. Wait, oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, what's your name? Betsy. She just says, sister. sister. Don't, Don't you have more than one sister. one sister? She's the first sister. So, what are the other sisters in under? Sister two, three, four. No, I'm kidding. Some of them have names. If others okay. have nicknames. Shit, I have a fucking answer. You know, this is such a... <laughs> <laughs> have you seen there's that trending thing right now, which is like... Your call has been forwarded to voicemail. The person you're trying to reach is not available. At the tone... If, if I, you know, if I... A million dollars to call someone, but only if they don't answer. That you only get the million bucks if they don't answer. Oh, I who can, do you call? I could give you. Oh, <laughs> dude, yeah, that's super fun. That's a great game. I could give you like thirty-six people. Really? Yeah. Are you sure they wouldn't answer? Pretty goddamn sure. <laughs> yeah, for a million dollars, yeah, I could. I could. Who's give you like some the people. first that comes to mind? Um, first, <laughs> my buddy Scott. Oh, Scott will. He won't answer probably because he's busy. He's doing stuff. Okay, but he'll text me like maybe later. Should we day. try it out? <laughs> I mean, I don't have a million do you, dollars. Do you know, actually, do you know Scott? Do you know Scott Evans? I don't know. Uh, he works at Access Hollywood. Oh. All right. Let's, let's see, see it. Let's see so it. So this is for a theoretical million dollars. He's my old roommate. If he, if he answers. Theoretically million dollars. All right. It's over. It's all over. He's going to. You know, let's see. I'll see if he likes that. I threw him under the bus. All right, Scotty, don't answer. But where does he live? L.A.? He's in L.A. So he should be yeah, awake. I think he's yeah. working. I could also put my dad on this list. Actually, my dad would probably answer, but he's 50-50. What about your ex-wife? <sighs> oh, God. Uh, not only uh, that, uh, not only did he not answer, <laughs> he sent me to voicemail. Yeah, you think so? That was four rings. Oh, okay. Four rings. Oh, I don't, I never paid attention to that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so that's so, a fun game. So I love the Midwest. Yeah. My, I mean, the re whole reason I have a TV show is because I had, dreamed of and fantasized about living in Michigan and hoped to move uh, to the UP. I wanted to bring that up because you found another right, Michigan right. gal. And then I ended up actually marrying and, and, and starting a family with a girl from Michigan. Um, She's from the, the lower part right, of the Michigan. Detroit, basically, yeah. Yeah, Detroit. Is that okay? Is hers? No, that's okay. Oh, okay. That's fine. Interesting that you I, really pointed it out. Well, I mean, the UP. No, not right. Yeah, is a beautiful place. But you know, Should it's be funny. Part of Wisconsin. Her dad's side of the family is from the UP, so like, oh. there's some, there is some. So maybe they, they knew. In there. Do they, do they know each other? Oh, uh, I don't know. Good That'd question. be a me thing. That's a very. And Midwest she has a lot thing. of family in Wisconsin too. Yeah, um, but I love it up there, and I remember that we met in June uh, of 2015, and. By that Christmas, we had spent enough time together that she invited me to come up for Christmas. Um, and I'd never done Christmas. You know, I'm a you know, Jewish kid from New York City, so like, 
you know, I just never had a Christmas tree, never, never partake, partook in any of that. So very excited. They have a whole family tradition. They go to the garden center on the end of their street, Christmas Eve, because that's when the trees are the cheapest. They're discounted. That's when they do it. <laughs> that <laughs> is so amazing. Yeah. Well, that's, you get them for 10, they're just, they're basically giving them away it's at that point. firewood at right? that point. <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah. So you know, your choices are, are limited, but there's always something. Yeah. So we walk down to the end of the street, we buy the, we get it for 20 bucks. I mean, the 20 Six. bucks. Yeah. For, for, a, I for mean, a full size. Now, oh, yeah. And I can tell you, if you cut one down, 18 bucks a foot. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So, so they're, it's just, yeah, they're giving them away. We walk it back, set it up, decorate it. Um, you know, we, we go in the morning, so Christmas Eve, but it's the end of the day. Yeah. It's, a, you know. it's an event. Right. It's a tradition. And it's a whole fun thing. And, and anyway, so fun. Then that night we went out. Um, oh, the next night, sorry. The next night we went out. And well, I was telling you about Cajou Cafe, that great old, yes. uh, I, th I think it's Belgian. I think it's a Belgian bar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sort of just north of Detroit that has feather bowling. Feather. Now, there's a couple things about the Midwest that I like. One is that this, there's this feather bowling place. I think it's the only one I know of in the United States. And I've been all over the United States. and I'm always looking for feather bowling. I've never found it anywhere else. So that's one, one reason I love Detroit. But also, whirly ball. Whirly ball? Yeah. Oh. It's very... I love whirly ball. There's, well... It's a pretty Midwestern thing. I didn't know that. There are a couple other places, one of which was in Orlando that closed. I mean, I'm really, when I'm on the job and I'm filming over, all over the country, first thing I do when I go to a new place is to see if they have whirly ball. And That's, they never do, except for yeah. Orlando, which closed. But there's a couple spots in the Midwest, so I love that. But we went to Cashew Cafe. Laura invited her all of her local hometown friends, one of whom is her first boyfriend. Um, who's Not weird. No, well, no, it was at first. Okay. But then we got so drunk together mm -hmm. and had so much fun, and he's so great. His name is Noah, and he's the best. I now have a friendship with Noah, very separate from Laura. And I've hung out with him in Denver, where he lives now. Like, we go out all the time. He's, he's great. It is funny and weird, but it I love is, it. Yeah. Anyway, Casual Cafe, Wasted, went to some other place after, on the way back, throwing up out the car window. Oh, uh, yes, yeah, yes. Which was, a, I think, a real rite of passage. I've never done that before. I mean, you know. Well, well. I've thrown up from drinking, you know, at like medieval times, but like never out the car window. Streaking off the oh, car. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then woke up just face down on the floor under the Christmas tree. God, that you just had picked up. <laughs> that in itself is a Christmas movie. It was a great Christmas. Yeah, that sh that's that when you pl just- That plush wall-to-wall -wall carpeting of the entire first floor of the her childhood home. Oh, they haven't changed it out, no. have they? Oh, yeah, so you- No, it's not changed. And, it's, and it looks great too, because every, pretty much every square inch of it is covered with Cheap kitchen bath mat rug, like little, you know, like yeah, 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 yeah. Like there's like <laughs> the rugs on the rugs. Yeah, there's like a trail of small <laughs> yeah. rugs Over on the, the most rugs. highly trafficked parts, so that it doesn't get dirty. You know? <laughs> That's, usually those rugs come in after it's been trafficked so it's, hard. Well, they yeah, it's pretty clean. I mean, for it's a, it's also like a cream color. I mean, it's like kind of like this. Yeah, it looks great for its age. It's like thirty years old. Wow, for that's still, incredible. Yeah, like, looking good. Yeah, we do have a preservation of our of our styles, yeah. you know, in the in the Midwest. I mean, I can't believe he her dad still has like the little arm, you know, on the sofa, those little like thing, like the fabric that covers the arm of the sofa. Yeah, so, you know, like you still got that. Well, they fall off a lot. They fall but off. You, you know, put them back on. <laughs> back on. Yeah, I forgot. What I mean. I, we had this couch. Oh my god! Yeah, we had we had this uh, plaid couch growing up that had those. Yeah, uh, got from my grandparents. Big we recliner. Took all my grandparents' furniture. Yeah, of course. As kids growing up, so I, my folks did. Um, you, you have to. It's good anyway, furniture. They, these are the things that I love about Midwestern homes and and people. Yeah, and it's they it's, take care of stuff. They do. Yeah, and and then they they don't take care of other stuff, but they'll fix it. 
Right. You know, unless it's a shirt. Yeah. And then we'll just let the stains red. Um, before we wrap up, I wanted to ask these two, did you guys have any questions as, as fans of the show that you do? You know, you as fans didn't get answered. It's a question from Sid, by the way, Don K's girlfriend. In some of your more recent episodes, you've had catfish that end up being scammers mm. who, for obvious reasons, don't want to or can't meet sure. you. Um, in your earlier seasons of the show, did you come across this often? And um, is that something that's become more prevalent as the show's progressed, or what right. a question? Yeah, said. that's a that's a Jeez. real. Do you want to deep cut? Do, do you want to repeat it? Yeah, I think I'll, the folks yeah. Well, can so hear. so we've had some scammers mm -hmm. over the years, and look, I I'm always surprised that people come on the show. Yeah, right. For <laughs> right. any number of reasons, even, even to this day. Yeah, I, I mean. Yeah. I, whether you're in love with someone and you think they could be lying to you or you've been lying to someone and you have to come clean, it never f seems like the best way to do that would be in sort of this very public way. When but, you have no control over the edit or anything. Right. Yeah. But people trust us, rightfully, because we present them as honestly and objectively as we can. Mm -hmm. And we, we don't sort of try to you know, point the finger and say, we got gotcha. you. Um, and, and I think for that reason, people do take the opportunity to go through these difficult moments and these tough conversations with our help. Mm -hmm. So I'm happy about that. But if you're a scammer, and we've had some, it is strange that you'd want to reveal yourself. Now, I did notice that since the pandemic, we've had a bunch of episodes where people who lost their jobs or you know, couldn't get a job or just were, you know, struggling, have felt more justified using the internet to get money from people in sort of surreptitious ways than they might have otherwise and didn't feel bad about it. They're like, yeah, look, I didn't have money. I lost my job. And I just talked to guys and they send me money. Like, what's the big deal? Mm. Um, so we did have, we've had a bunch of, a little bit of an uptick, I think, in that sort of attitude towards uh, scamming, like scam, light scamming, you well, know? <clears throat> it's interesting because you think about OnlyFans. Right. Similar business model, you know? I mean, not scamming. <clears throat> let, me, sure. let me say that. But right. it's you're offering something, attention, affection. Right. exactly. In return, you're getting a new pair of sunglasses sent to you. Money. Right. Now, not get, to defend right. it. No, but... But I do think that, that there's a line that gets crossed when people, pr pr you know, falsely present themselves or True. misrepresent themselves. True. Oh, sure. I mean, any lying, really. Right. You know, but I could see perhaps a, where that justification is coming from. Yeah. Like, hey, you know, you know. so so that that is interesting. Um, and sometimes I wonder if like some of these people in the right venue. And like an OnlyFans. So I've sent a lot of people to OnlyFans, to be honest with you. Oh, yeah? I mean, like, yeah, well, like, there's, there's a, a, a girl that's been on the show now twice for catfishing. Um, she's transgendered, and I keep telling her, like, there are a lot of people. She likes to talk to guys, and she likes to get sort of showered with affection and financial... Uh, Gifts, of, mm -hmm. you know, whether whatever it is, and it's like if you you like, there's a lot of guys that would love to sugar daddies, right? Right. Sure, there there are plenty of sugar daddies out there that would be super into you in a fully transparent relationship, rather than the sort of straight guys that are not necessarily looking to be with a transgender woman mm -hmm. who are now going to be disappointed and upset. So rather than endanger yourself and potentially piss someone off, mm -hmm. just find the people that are looking for you and they're they're out there. So I think she has since um I don't know if she's on OnlyFans, but I know she's got her own, like, you know, she she started a page for herself and I helped sort of boost her profile and share her stuff. So, you know. That's cool. Yeah. It's it's kind of taking this uh thing and saying is there a legitimate avenue right. for it. And there you know? I think there is nowadays. Yeah. I mean there's a there's a pot for every uh kettle. Lid, lid, lid for, for every pot. Ah, 
Sid, did that answer your question? Yeah, yeah. I was wondering in your like earlier seasons, obviously the goal was to meet the right. person. Were there times where there just was no like firm and solid ending? Kind of just had to wrap it up. We did, yeah. We've had we've had some episodes that ended a little um, undefined. Mm -hmm. You know, they didn't have a clear finish line. Um, we, you know, we, we tried to meet this one girl. That was crazy. I, I don't. I'm gonna try to recall, but basically, there was this guy and this girl. They've been talking for a while. She would kind of come and go and disappear. We looked her up and we found some news stories about how she had had a child with some drug dealer and 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 not abandoned the child, but the child, whatever. It was, she had a rough sort of life and some shit had happened to her. And she's now in a relationship with this guy who's in jail. And we wanted to meet her and she said she would meet us, but it turns out the guy got out of jail that same week. And she couldn't talk to him and be like, hey, I just need to go meet this guy I was talking to while you were in jail. You know, like... Doesn't come across. Right, right. right. Yeah. So we didn't get to meet her. We did get to meet her sister, I think, who came on sort of her behalf and said, hey, look, she's not going to meet you. Um, so it was a little unresolved, but kind of got the gist of it. Um, we had one other person that didn't show up, but, would, but FaceTimed with us. Uh, but for the most part, We've been able to to navigate every situation to a finish of, of some kind, to a completion point. Um, and there's only been two episodes, I think, that we filmed that never aired, which is pretty good. That know? is, and, um, and just because you couldn't finish it? One was just a stupid legal, no, no, we, I mean, one of them was honestly one of my favorite episodes ever. And I'm sad that it never aired. Um, Why didn't it? It didn't air because the young man who was sort of featured in it uh, was a special needs mm -hmm. uh, individual. Um, and so sweet, so so funny and charming, but, but had some issues with sort of um, social norms. Mm -hmm. uh, and adhering to sort of polite society in some ways. And after we filmed, he got in a little bit of trouble because he was, I think he was partially nude in a public park or something. And because of that, legally, it was risky to air something. And so we couldn't. I see. Yeah. Yeah. So. <clears throat> You kind of, uh, you kind of, uh, yeah. You gotta uh, choose your battles there. You right. know? I get yeah, that. I was, Are, I was sad though. Is there anything that you've put out over the course of the years that, like, you regret, or have you been lucky enough to never hmm. feel, never do something that you regret putting out on the show, on specifically the, on the show, or, or by, by anywhere else? Where I mean, know? I've yeah, I mean, I've done some some things and said some things that I would love to have not done yeah. or said, but I, I also learned from those things mm -hmm. and, and recovered from them and um, apologized where, where necessary. So, yeah, yeah, I don't know. I think about, uh, well, nowadays, we don't have kids yet, but the whole thing with like, this is sort of a weird zag, but like pictures of your kids on the internet. Oh, yeah. You ever think about that? Yeah, I mean... I'm like, should I have done that? Should I, like... Because I can never take those back. Like, what if they don't want to have pictures of themselves on the internet when they get older? That's an interesting spiral you can go down late at yeah. night. Yeah. Yeah. So, as a rule, do you do that now, or do you not do I mean, that? I mean, I've done it that? a lot less. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's a weird thing. It's a, it's a weird thing to think about. Yeah. It's, we're very used to, especially as a public figure, you're used to just putting it out there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, food for thought. I can tell your wheels are turning on that one still. Well, I was also trying to think if I should make a joke. Oh, yeah. What was the joke going to be? No, if I you was going to say, like, it? oh, I also, you know, put that video of my butthole on the internet. But Oh, yeah. Well, you know, 
It was well trimmed. Well, that's the thing. Mm-hmm. It's not. Well, I need to trim. You know, I mean. Do you trim? What? How much grooming do you do? Fair amount. I do a lot. Fair amount. Yeah. I mean, you got to. But all, you go with full On the butt crescent? Hole. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. yeah. I get a little lazy there sometimes. Tough one. Tough one to reach. Well, also, depending on how you trim, the hair can get coarse. The ends of the hair. I've had it. Yeah, experience. you don't want an internal. Um, right. What do you call it? An uh, ingrown. An ingrown. Yeah, I try to avoid that. You know. Yeah. Yeah. You you got a lot of ingrown hairs on your. No. I don't. I wasn't gonna. I mean, don't get offended. <laughs> no, dude. You I don't. brought it up. Well, no, no, no. Well, I did bring it up. I, no, I don't. Well, I I made the mistake once of like really trimming all of my hairs down there and it was and it really irritated no i didn't shave i just trimmed but then i was very irritated folks get your manscaped trimmer at i'm waiting i'm waiting for them to reach out to me i've talked about this before i do a lot of manscaping yeah i have to armpits i basically keep like super short um when do you when do you think so when do you think the culture shifted toward fellas trimming the pits because i know in this audience there's a lot of fellas like i've never trimmed my pits yeah i mean look i don't i i think well everybody's bodies are different some guys have a lot less or shorter armpit hair Mm -hmm. i have thicker longer hair that sort of just keeps growing daddy long legs yeah well and i noticed that and this is mainly why i do it i smell way less when my armpit hair is short. That's why I did too, so I could not wash my shirts as much. Well, I also get Botox in my armpits, so what I don't the sweat. Fuck? Does it stop your sweat? my French. Stops your sweat. If you're a sweater. Yeah. You know, or, or, or they say, they say, um, there's a, wait, hold on, let me get the term. There's a, a hyperhidrosis is the uh, I have a disease. medical terminology for people who sweat a lot. So, I was on, you know, I'm like on TV and I can't wear anything. Oh, makes sense. So I was like, what can I do? And like, oh, just put some Botox in there and it'll stop. And it's amazing. Because you got, stops. And does it help with the mood? I heard that it's a mood booster. Oh, I don't know. I've never. Some sort. Mm, I don't know. You've never heard that? Botox I had not heard that. booster? No. Oh, yeah. No, where, some, any, just in your body anywhere? Yeah, I don't know. I didn't read huh. past the headline. Interesting. Yeah. It could be fake news too. Um, um. Dante, did you have any questions or did Sig kind no, of take it? They all got it. Good deal. Good deal. Well, I've kept yeah. you here so long. That's and we're talking about injecting Botox into our armpits. So I don't want to take up more of your time, but I would love, you know, do a sketch. You, we can even bring your wife into the deal too if she's into that. I don't know if she's into that. Sure, kind of sure, thing. Yeah. That'd be fun, man. I'm I glad we it. could do this. And let me know next time you're uh, getting some catfish. And hey, how about this? You're in Wisconsin uh, okay. filming catfish. We'll go f- catch some catfish. Like Winnebago. You want to go catfish? Sure. Actual catfish? Yeah, or, yeah absolutely. I, well, I really want to go noodling. Oh, we can go noodling on the Mississippi River, the yeah. banks of the Mississippi. On the banks of the Mississippi. There, there's a I song. would say one out of 100 people, when I tell them to make a show called Catfish, say, oh, do you, you noodle? Like, yeah. I get, I do get that. That's good. Um, it's more in the Midwest, in the South. Right. It's bigger South, in the bigger South. Bigger in the South. Oh my God. Yeah. But yeah, you can do it. Have yeah. you ever done it? Um, I did attempt it uh-huh. and I was unsuccessful. But catfish, one of the first fish I caught was a little catfish, little whiskers. Actually, last story, um, I was fishing and I found this old beer can in the uh, drink. I was kayak fishing and I pulled it out and there was some living in it. I like, what the fuck? I pulled out my knife. I opened this old beer can, almost cut my thumb doing it. And inside, a little bit of catfish. Wow. It was a bullhead, um, which is kind of like a catfish. Uh-huh. I don't even know if it's a, just a small catfish. Uh-huh. I don't think it is. I think it's a different fish, but it looks like a catfish. So it was not a catfish. But for the purposes of this conversation. <laughs> well, the story kind of. Kind of made sense. Dece- well, well the, the, the nature of the story was sort of deceptive. It was deceptive. And inside, I thought I was just right. getting a beer can. And inside, right. there was an actual... But then your telling of the story was also deceptive. Don't so you... pull this journalism crap on me on my own podcast. No, I'm just saying, dude. since it wasn't actually a catfish, it almost is a... It almost... 
makes more sense that you told it uh, in that way. Yeah, because right. you you set me up. I did, and then I did that intentionally. Right, that's what yeah. I mean. Thank you for. So you were trying to yes end save my it. game. Yeah. yeah, you were trying to save it, and I just threw myself under the bus. <laughs> well, anyway, <laughs> this was fun, man. Any final th- thoughts? What's the name of the podcast? Cripes cast. Cripes. Yeah. Like the, the expression. Cripes right, right. cast instead of podcast. Right. And it's just you. Well, and you. Right. And other guests. But no, 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 no co-host ever. Uh, Colleen um, is, um, she uh, kind of comes on with me on the intro. Got it. Yeah. Cripes. Yeah. I do another podcast with a co-host at a bar, the bellied up one. And you got your music. I do have a music album. I saw that. Yeah. Yeah. I'll send it to you for Hanukkah. (laughs) You a record player? I don't. You don't have a record player? (sighs) You know what? You got kids. You don't need a record player. No. I'm going to send you a nice, I'm going to send, I'm going to find you a vintage vacuum. You're like, please don't. I live in New York City. I got nowhere to put that thing. No. Uh, final thoughts. Um, I think I think I'm gonna end up living in Michigan. Hell yeah. Yeah. When? When are you making the move? I think maybe soon. Yeah, dude. That's so, great. D- Detroit area or the maybe. UP? No, I don't think. What I need about to go a that cabin part. in the UP? I mean, I would love to get a house in Michigan somewhere, but why the UP? I mean, it's it's, it's awesome beautiful, too. but it's so yeah. it's just so remote. Well, you know that's part of the reason yeah, you go up there. That's true. Yeah, or Traverse what City. You, what, about, uh, what about what um, about Mackinac Island? Oh yeah, I mean you guys I, get over there. Spendy, right? I, I was actually, actually, is it expensive? I think so. Oh, I actually, cool. to be honest with you, never never um, been uh, there. Huh. Yeah, I know. Judge me. How far do you live from there? Uh, about 10 hours. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, I got to go up the horn. Right. Uh, all the way up through the UP. Right, Dante? About 10 hours? Seven? Yeah. But I got pee and... I like Milwaukee. Yeah, Milwaukee's great. It's really great. When are you there it's next? It's like a little little mini Chicago. Don't call it that. When are you there next? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. I never know. I never know where I'm going and when. Okay. So you'll never get more than a few days heads up. All right. Well, I'll try to be more on my... Deal. Now we have. Um, right. Now we can. Now we have the texting. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and when you call me, I'm really going to try to answer. We should. Yeah, we we have. Should we make a pact? I have a pact with my brother that when you, you call, have it, to answer <laughs> if your brother's calling. Okay, I'm going to do my best. I have my phone. I do not disturb a lot. All right, when you call, <laughs> I will answer the call. Okay, I'm your Batman. Great. Mm-hmm. Uh, this was fun. That feels good. Yeah, it feels real good. Well, I suppose that about does her. Yeah, wraps her all up. All right. Well, where where can people follow you? Oh, it's okay. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right, folks. That is it for this week's episode of the Cripes Cast. Neve uh, did not really give his social somewhere to follow him, but I'll do it for him. You can follow Neve at at Neve Shulman anywhere you get your uh, socials. That's at N E V S C H U L M A N. Make sure you follow him real quick. Colleen, thank you so much for being such a great producer of this podcast. You do a it was job. so good to catch up with you. Oh, my gosh. I can taste the sarcasm over <laughs> Zoom, but it was fun, it was good. Colleen. It was good to catch up. Um, but, yeah, if you want to follow the Cripes Cast anywhere you get or anywhere on social media at Cripes Cast and um, podcast anywhere you get your podcast, please leave a review or comment or whatever. We love hearing from you guys about fan suggestions of who to get on, all of that type of stuff. And if you want to see the full video version of this podcast, go to Spotify or YouTube. And that's all I have for that. (laughs) Thank you, Colleen. And uh, thanks to Hannah Milos for editing and a big thanks to all of you out there for listening. We appreciate you. Everyone keep her moving and do watch out for deer. We will see you next week. So roll out the barrel and get the band brewing. Life's got you down. Just keep her moving. It's on Wisconsin. The Badgers say it's the old Wisconsin.
Wisconsin Jubilee. You know, sometimes when you're ice fishing, you put your foot in the walleye hole and go ass over tea kettle and you think you're done. No, you gotta keep her moving. <laughs>